What's cracking, big dogs? It's your boy Nick back here with some fantasy football action for y'all today. My last video was a recap of the madness that's been the free agency thus far, and I centered on the wide receiver position. If you missed that, go check it out here before you even get into this one. Today, we're going to move over to the quarterbacks. The gunslingers, the dudes who touch the center's nuts. There hasn't been a crazy amount of moves in terms of the quarterback position. Nothing, definitely nothing up to par with the wide receivers. But nonetheless, they're a fantasy football position, so we have to talk about it, right? I'd rather not, but it's what the people want. So if you're enjoying the fantasy stuff, definitely go give that other video a thumbs up. Go give this one a thumbs up. Hit me with some suggestions that you'd like to see. This I know it's super early in the fantasy season, but I'm trying to get some ideas for for what kind of uh, episodes I could do for the channel throughout the off season, you know, because there's only so much content that's kind of put out uh, about this stuff right now. So enough of me rambling, enough of me scrambling. Let's get to it. First up, we got this kid, Mike Lennon. Moves over to Shy City. Can you say Shy City? He gets what looks like to be a huge contract from the Bears. It's like three years, forty-five million, and everyone's like, <gasps> only like eighteen and a half of the of the money is guaranteed, and sixteen of it is guaranteed in the first year. So basically, after the first year is done, the Bears can pretty much do whatever they want with this contract. So for those of you that are Bears fans, I guess don't don't go crazy over this move. He's not um. He's not. He's definitely not their long-term investment. And I mean, how could he be? He's he's played four, uh, 20 games over the last four years. So there's not even that much on the guy to kind of work off with here. Looks like teams are kind of finally starting to fucking learn about paying quarterbacks a bajillion dollars. You know, taking a uh, taking some notes when you see Brock Osweilers of the world. Regardless, Mike Lennon's basically been named their starter already. He's 27 years old. He's like 6'6", 230. So he's this big guy. He's, you know, he hasn't fully developed yet. And you hear, I mean, you hear 27, but look, what the fuck is 27 when you have Drew Brees and Tom Brady who are like 65, right? That he could win the next 10 Super Bowls and be the greatest quarterback of all time. Who knows? So I think the fascination around Mike Lennon is, you know, it goes back to his rookie year, which is like 2013, which is like pre, pre big dogs gotta eat. Mm, so sad. It was a long time ago, he posted a 19 to 9 touchdown interception ratio, which is definitely got to give the credit where it's due. It's very good for a rookie in this league. It's tough to do. Um, 30 and 15 touchdown interception ratio now for his career. But when, when you start digging into the numbers and you start looking at it from a fantasy perspective, a big stat and a big teller of how successful you're going to be in terms of fantasy is yards per attempt for quarterbacks. You see these guys like Matt Ryan, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, you know, all those Drew Brees, all those kind of guys who are consistently at the top of the fantasy rankings, their yards per attempt are always consistently between like eight, nine, up to 10 yards per attempt. In Glennon's rookie year, it was at like six and a half. And he, Glennon improved from his rookie year to his sophomore year. It went from six and a half yards per attempt to like 6.98 or something like that. You know, it's good to see the improvement, but when you look at last year's quarterbacks in fantasy, of the 18 top quarterbacks in fantasy, so fantasy quarterbacks one through 18, only three of those quarterbacks were under seven yards per attempt. So, I mean, something's got to give there, right? I mean, it's definitely possible that, that Glennon can wiggle his way into the quarterback two conversation by mid-year, something like that. But, you know, to expect anything more than, than that would be would be just foolish. You know, he's not even a late-round sleeper in my eyes. And that's partly due to be because of the weapons around him, too. I guess when we're looking at how this affects the weapons around him, you know, we have... We don't have a lot of info to work on, but when I looked back at... Um, first, let's go over the weapons. We'll have Cameron Meredith. They brought in... Kendall Wright, they brought in Marcus Wheaton, and they already had, who's their f or fourth weapon, I guess. They have Zach Miller recovering from injury, and fourth Bears wide receiver. Help me! Help! I wish this was live. Actually, I definitely don't wish this was live, because you guys would be like, this kid's retarded. Anyways, um, so looking back to his rookie year when he had success, what, what do we see from his pass casters? Who do we see could take a kind of big bump here? I was looking back, and on the team, 
there was only one wide receiver in the top 65 fantasy wide receivers in that rookie year that Mike Lennon had. It was Vincent Jackson, finished as a wide receiver. Um, he's finished pretty high up. I forget what it was, maybe 12 or 15. Finished with 1,200 yards and seven touchdowns. No other wide receivers were in the top 65. He also made Tim Wright, their tight end, a, a very relevant fantasy uh, tight end. He finished as tight end 12 that year. He had 54 catches, about 570 yards and five touchdowns. And that was only in 14 games. That says that, you know, there can be a productive fantasy wide receiver on this team. And as I explained in my wide receiver breakdown last episode, I think Cameron Meredith could definitely be that guy. He's kind of built like Vincent Jackson, too. He's a big guy, plays the outside well. He, he's a go-getter. Um, so so if there's if there's anyone I see that with a possible breakout, it's definitely Meredith in my eyes. And then Tim Wright had that big year, and Tim Wright is by no means a good <laughs> tight end. There's Zach Miller on the team. He's recovering from injury. Hopefully, he'll be ready to go by the season. They also signed Deion Sims. Neither of them are like elite pass catchers, but it, Glennon's shown that he does like to dump the ball off to his tight end. So could be interesting to see what happens if, if Zach Miller and, and Cameron Meredith get you know, combined 50% of the targets or 45% of the targets, they could they could put up some good fantasy numbers for you, really, um, and you can get them really late in the draft. So definitely people to keep an eye on with the Mike Lennon signing. Next up, we got to move over to West Coast and San Francisco, where the 49ers went ahead and signed Brian Hoyer. The signing would have been a lot more interesting to me had they went out and signed any kind of talent at wide receiver. Like, I understand they got Pierre Garcon, but, like, come on. Like, fucking work with me here, people. Well, nonetheless, we have to waste our time on this conversation. Interestingly, though, the... <clears throat> Interestingly, though, 49ers did bring in Kyle Shanahan. If you guys remember last season, Kyle Shanahan led the Falcons to an unprecedented offensive season. Like, it was unbelievable the way that offensive that offense ran with him. And he did absolute wonders for Matt Ryan, who was a little bit above average for his entire career and then absolutely boosted off last year. Now, I don't even know why I'm bringing this point up because Ryan Hoyer is not even close to Matt Ryan and then nothing they have on their offense is close to anything the Falcons had on their offense. So it's a whole different situation, but Kyle Shanahan is an incredible offensive mind and I'm, I'm expecting him to implement some of those things that he had in Atlanta in San Fran. And it might take up until next year to see any results from that because that was kind of what happened in Atlanta. But back to Hoyer, back to that who I was even talking about. Hoyer can... Uh, Sorry. Hoyer can sling the ball sometimes. We saw he had a, a cute little run last year in Chicago. He was putting up some big numbers over like it was like a four game span. All right. Uh, actually, I was looking back at the numbers and they were really fucking impressive, to, to be honest with you. It was from weeks three to six last year. He was a starting quarterback. He put up over 300 yards in all four games consecutively. He had a six to zero touchdown to interception ratio during that span. His completion percentage was up there in the 70s. It was 72%, I believe. And more importantly for y'all, he was a top five fantasy quarterback over that span. That being said, I would never tell you to draft him in a fantasy draft, unless you're in like a three quarterback league. In that case, I don't like, what the fuck are you doing? But uh, I will say he's a very interesting streaming option this year. Seeing if, uh, you know, maybe the health of Carlos Hyde, the addition of Pierre Garçon, the addition of Kyle Shanahan, and maybe Brian Hoyer hitting a hot streak could, you know, you could see him being a, being a streamer at some point during, during the year because I'm one of those guys that likes to stream a quarterback a lot. So should be interesting to see, I guess. It shouldn't be really interesting at all, but whatever. Next up, we got Ty God Taylor. Back in Buffalo, man, I'll be honest with you, and I feel like a lot of football fans could probably agree with me here. I'm pretty happy to see the guy back in Buffalo, and I'm glad he's getting another chance to to do his thing there and kind of prove himself. Last year was super up and down for Tyrod as an actual NFL player, especially with, you know, Sammy Watkins in and out of the lineup. That being said, he still finished inside the top eight as a fantasy quarterback. And in 2015, he was in the top eight on a points-per-game basis. So, you know, it's back-to-back -back years. It's not a secret anymore. Tyrod... Although he has his ups and downs, at the end of the year, he's he's up there with the top quarterbacks. People can say what they want about him, you know, say he's not a, a good NFL quarterback, but he's a damn good fantasy quarterback, I'll tell you that shit. He just gets drafted nowhere. I don't even think he went drafted last year, and then, you know, it'll be the same situation this year. Hopefully they'll do something for him through free agency or through uh, the draft, because we saw Robert Woods is gone. 
he needs Sammy Watkins to stay healthy, man. They have nothing on that offense besides him, Watkins, and LaShawn. But if Sammy's healthy, man, him and Tyrod are are deadly together. Um, in like the half season Watkins played last year, Tyrod was a top five fantasy quarterback. So I'm just, you know, the potential is always there, and I'm glad he resigned to get another, another, another crack at it. You know, he he's someone I'm going to be targeting late because. <clears throat> that rushing ability just gives him s- such an advantage, such a floor compared to the quarterbacks that are drafted around him. So I, I'm thumbs up to Tyrod. This is like one of the only guys on this list that I like the signing of. And lastly, lastly but not leastly, actually probably leastly, Josh McCowan signs with the New York Jets one year. I think it was six mil guaranteed. I don't know the numbers. Does it really f- matter? This dude's been a road warrior. He's been in the league. It's been in the league longer than, like, Perry Ellis is at Kansas. Aaron Kraft is at Ohio State, it seems like. He's like the, he, yeah, he's like the Aaron Kraft of the NFL. Like, can this dude just, like, retire or some shit? Anyways, he's 37. This will either be his 14th year in the league or his 15th year in the league. Um, and it's safe to say, safe to say, his best years are behind him. It's actually probably safer to say that his best years aren't actually a thing. He never had them, and he probably won't ever have them. Basically, Josh McCown. You know what? I, I I don't want to talk bad about about my boy Josh. He's a great guy. Great guy. He's never played a full 16 games in a season out of those 14, 15 years. And at, at, out of all those seasons, he's only had three seasons where he had a positive touchdown to interception ratio. He's a sur- He's a serviceable backup quarterback, maybe third string for NFL teams. But he's got a ton of experience, so they like him. But regardless, I think his injury history might even be more concerning than his actual play. When he's on the field, I've we've seen him hit hot streaks, but he literally can never stay on the field. It's just, dude, the Jets are just, holy shit. Holy shit! What are we doing here in New York? Um, I will say, though, I, I think... I don't think it's a downgrade for guys like Decker and Anunua and Forte. Uh, I think, if anything, McCowan plays just as well as Ryan Fitzpatrick would. Even probably better than Fitzpatrick last year because he was ass cheeks. I don't actually expect McCowan to play the full 16 games. As I said, he's never done it before. Y- you got to think that, you know, Hackenberg is going to get a start here or there. You know, I don't even – I have no idea what New York is doing. I guess my takeaway is that I'm staying away from anyone that plays in, in New Jersey. Yeah, I said New Jersey. Most- and, um, and wears a green jersey. So, I, I don't know. That's really what I have to say. And uh, apart from that, I don't think there were any other quarterback moves that I can touch. I'm not going to talk about Geno Smith. There were. I don't know. Let me know. Comment. You know, a question for you guys. Out of the... not Tyrod not included because he's a whole other level. Out of Mike Lennon, Brian Hoyer, and Josh McCown, if you had to pick one to finish the season as top quarterback, fantasy quarterback out of those three, who would you pick? I think I want to say... I'm going to say Brian Hoyer. I'm going to say he finishes above Mike Lennon. I, I just, I don't know. I don't I don't trust the fact that he only played in 20 games. I don't trust the fact that over the last four years, I just, that Chicago offense is just shit. And I like what the 49ers are slowly trying to build over there. So I like Brian Hoyer a little bit here. Answer that question below if you watch this. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and you enjoyed. There will be more fantasy. Next up will be either tight ends or running backs. Probably still the tight ends because we're waiting on a couple of RBs to sign before I get this video out. Um, anyways, hope you all enjoyed. And I will see you all on the next video. Thank you. Peace. Yeah. And you say Shaw City. Shaw City. Shy City. I'm coming home again. Do you think about me now and then? Yeah. Do you-